In this Blender and Photoshop tutorial, I will show you how to create masks in Blender to easily edit different parts of an image in post-processing. Before we start, you will want to download an add-on I created to speed up the mask creation process. It's available for free on my Patreon. Check it out and let's get started. Let's quickly explain how to install the add-on. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install from Disk and select this zip file. Now it is installed and you can access the add-on on the sidebar. If you don't see the sidebar, just press the End key. Make sure to have the standard color management, so the colors of the mask are modified when saving the image. Now go to Viewport Shading and let's set up a few things here. Set the lighting to flat, set the background to black and uncheck all of these options. We will be using both material and object in a minute. Also make sure to disable the overlays. At this point we are ready to start creating the masks. All you need to do is select an object, go to the object tab and change its color in the viewport display. Using red, blue and green will make sense when we move to Photoshop. As you can imagine, selecting each individual object could be annoying and you will also need to make black all the objects that you don't want selected. That's why I created this add-on. With one click you can turn all objects in the scene to black. Then you can select multiple objects and turn them to red, blue or green with one button. The logic while creating masks is to apply the same color to different objects that don't overlap with each other. Hey. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave a comment to help the channel grow. Ok, but let's say you want a mask for the floor, but the floor is part of the same object as the wall and ceiling. For this reason, we are going to create a second mask image, and in this case we will switch to material in the viewport shading. As you can see, all materials have a random color, and you can modify these colors in the viewport display of the selected material. Remember, you need to turn to black all the unwanted material as well. To simplify this task, you can simply click this button here. Then, turn the material viewport shading color to red, blue or green. Now that both mask images are ready, go to View and click Viewport Render Image. Make sure to save this as a default PNG with 16-bit depth. Let's move forward to Photoshop. I have all the images here, plus the second option where I changed the floor and the painting. Move all the images to the same canvas by holding the Shift key while dragging the images to the main canvas. This will perfectly align the joined images. Let's bring the mask images while holding Shift as well. I like to make sure everything is aligned before starting to work. If you don't find some of these windows, Go to Window in the menu bar and enable them. Let's begin with the mask. Go to Channels, click on Red, which is the floor, right click and select Duplicate Channel. I will name this as Floor. I will repeat the same process with the green channel. Go back to the Layers tab and we can delete this image since we already extracted all the data we needed from it. Let's do the same with the second mask image. In this case, I will call this small table. Now I will duplicate it and call the new one chairs. I will make a selection of the chairs and with the brush I will paint them black. So now this channel only has the small table selection on it. I will do the opposite on the chairs channel. It's going to be the same process with the carpet and the plant.
Once we are done with this, we are finally ready to start editing the image. I will start with the plant, which looks kind of fake. Go to Select, Load Selection and select the channel Plant. Photoshop will automatically select the plant. With the selection, create a hue saturation adjustment and let's play with these values until we'll find a more natural looking plant. Let's continue with the carpet. Let's say we want to make it brighter. So we can use the curves adjustment. And what about changing the color of the sofa and armchair? Let's select them, create a new layer, and then create a mask based on the selection. Don't forget to select the main layer instead of the max layer and then paint the whole layer with a color. Set this layer to overlay, and now we can change the sofa color to any color we want. Remember, this works better when your base color is white. What if I want to check a few different options for the paintings and floor? I have here the second render I did, which I didn't show in this video. I will duplicate it and name it Painting. I will select the Painting channel and apply the selection as a mask. Now I can easily turn the painting on and off. I could have many different options to quickly show to my client. Let's do the same with the wood floor. I'm renaming all the layers for better organization. I will show you one more trick with the last selection. I'm modifying the brightness with the curves adjustment. And I will also modify the hue value. As you can see, this adjustment layer is working on top of everything in the image. To apply it only to the small table layer below, you can click here. You can stack many adjustment layers using this option. Save this as a PSD file so you can come back to it and modify it according to your client's endless feedback. Now you are an expert in Blender masks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you.